We're going to continue our study of HTML by looking at lists and tables, two different things that you can use to put structured data on a web page. You can organize information a lot of different ways. Lists and tables are just two different ways to do that. Tables allow you to arrange data however you wish in a two-dimensional sort of grid, and then lists allow you to present items as either ordered or unordered. So tables consist of rows and columns. I'm sure in your academic career you've seen many, many tables. Well, you can use something called tables to organize data onto a web page. Think of a table as a two-dimensional grid made up of rows and columns. They can contain a lot of elements, a table can, but some of them are just optional that allow you to do more formatting. So in this particular case, I have a 3 by 4 HTML table. You can see that I have a table, and within it I have a T head and a T body. Within the T head, or the table head, you'll see that there's a table row and three TH cells. TH stands for table heading or header. And then down in the T body, you will see that there are four TRs, or table rows, each row containing three TDs. These are the data cells. So I know it looks you know, really complicated right now, but just think of it as a grid and that all of the table elements all have logical names. I always tell students that a table is just like a web page. It can have a table head and a table body in that order. The table head, in this case, contains the column headings and the table body contains the data. A lot of the elements for a table are optional. Lists are a little bit more straightforward. We have two different types. We have an OL element and a UL element. OL stands for ordered list, and of course, UL stands for unordered list. Lists are just collections of related items that you can choose to either order or not order. If you order something, it will be prefixed by a number. If you choose to use an unordered list, then there will be some sort of bullet which prefixes each item. It's important to note that there's two different types of lists but each list contains the same kind of list item, which we'll learn about here in a moment. Oh well, pretty straightforward. If you want to create an ordered list on your page, you will create an OL element. In this example, I have an ordered list of what I think are the best colleges. And inside that list, you will see three LI elements. In this case, I have Stanford, MIT, and Yale. Because I've chosen an ordered list, you will see a one, two, three, some sort of number that prefixes my list item. Once again, list items need to go within the ordered list. You will notice the indentation here, which shows you that these list items go inside the list. Simply listing OL on your web page will do nothing. You must put list items within the opening and closing OL tags. If you want to create a list that is unordered, let's say a shopping list, then you would use UL. The UL element must wrap one or more LI elements. In this case, I have three list items, milk, eggs, toilet paper. You will notice that since I've chosen an unordered list, a UL element, all of my items are prefixed by a bullet instead of a number. So list items, the LI element basically wraps the text of an individual list item. These LI elements should be placed within either a UL or an OL. So when you say UL or OL, you're basically defining a list. But just like any list, a list must have one or more items, and that's where the LI element comes in. You can place these within an ordered list or an unordered list. It does not matter. Let's talk about tables. Tables can be simple or tables can be complicated. No matter how simple or complicated your table, you must have a table element, basically an opening table and closing table tag. Everything related to your table needs to go within this opening and closing table tag. And then you can optionally include a table heading group or T head. The table heading group normally contains the column headers Next comes an optional table row group or T body. This forms the body of the table and normally contains the data. In this case, 
team and win loss is our T head, and then the rest of the rows are our T body. You will normally put table rows within your table. After all, a table is simply a collection of rows and columns. Table rows can go wherever you choose them to go. For example, here we have a row which contains team and win loss, our column headings. And then we have two more rows in our table body which has the data, the team, and its particular win loss record. So these are TRs or table rows. Table rows can contain many things. One thing they contain are called table headers, and these are normally used for your column heading or whatever label you want to describe the data. In this particular case, in our table heading group, we have one row that has two different table headers because we have two columns, and those are called TH elements. For data, you will normally use the TD element, which stands for a table cell element. These normally are used for individual pieces of data. For example, in the body of our table, we have two different rows. Those rows contain each two cells of data. And so that is how we populate our table with information by using TD elements. Since tables and lists can be sort of complicated, I need you to go back to the Mozilla Developer Network and make sure that you look at the HTML element reference for all of the elements that I've taught you today. Be patient, look at the examples, and realize that some elements go underneath other elements, and by looking at the examples, it'll help you keep it straight. The Mozilla project, the hands-on project that goes with this presentation slash video, is called Lists and Tables, and this will get you invaluable hands-on practice creating lists and tables. So make sure you follow that tutorial that is in the thimble completely and you see me for any questions. I'm gonna take a moment to demonstrate for you how to create some of these tags. So let's say I was making a shopping list. Well, a shopping list by definition is an unordered list. So I would start with a UL element. The UL just defines the list, but then I need to actually put LI elements inside. I'm going to create a three item list. Remember, you can always control C, control V to copy. Sometimes that's the best way to write efficiently. So my first list item can be milk, eggs, bread. So as you can see, that's how easy it is to create a list. The UL or OL just defines what type of list it is. So if I replace U with O, then my list would change, no longer prefixed with bullets, now prefixed with numbers. So that's how you create lists. Remember, LI elements, list items go within either your unordered or ordered list. Tables can be a little bit more complicated, but no matter how simple or complicated, all tables need to have a table element, a start and end table tag. Within a table are simply rows made with TR and columns made with either TD or TH. So right here is the simplest table you can make. It has one row and one column. That's simple. Now in the presentation I showed you one much more complicated. One that has two different groups. The table heading group and the table body group, defined as T head and T body. It's really no different, however. In the table head, you can have a row. Remember, we make rows with the TR element. And within the TR element, in the head, you could use a table heading, which would say something like best teachers. Okay, so that is the head of your table. It has one row and then one table header. Now in the body, you can create rows to represent your data. Remember, we create rows using TR. And then we normally represent individual cells of information using TD. So if I wanted to list best teachers, I could create a row for each and simply replace the data. And there you go. I have a table 
It has a T head, then a T body. My head has one row with one column header, and then my body has two rows, each with a piece of table data. So it seems kind of complicated, but just remember that a table is a collection of rows and columns, and that by following this strategy, you'll be able to create very robust tables, which can represent two-dimensional information.